Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Storytale Stagings here on Home Staging TV's YouTube channel. We are super excited to have a special guest with us today to help celebrate the new the new year. Woo! <laughs> super excited about that. Um, so let me introduce you. This is Kevin Tain, and he is a lifetime master accredited staging professional who is an iconic figure in the staging industry for creating emotionally magnetizing spaces that sell. I, I've seen his work. It's amazing. Kevin's company, Identity Home, is um, staging and design and specializes in staging homes for real estate, interior design, as well as home builders consultations. Uh, and since 2005, he has successfully staged over 1 billion square feet over $789 million of real estate in Southern California, a hot, hot market, and Nevada. And Kevin and his team is staging um, regularly. Their staging is featured on HGTV's number one rated show, Flip or Flop. And he is here to share some amazing feng shui transformations he's been working on. So I'm super excited to have you today, Kevin. Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> An impressive bio. <laughs> I'm Thank loving you. it. Yes. Um, so, Happy New Year. Happy Chinese New Year to you, too. The year of the ox. The yes. What does that mean? Well, my brother's an ox, so it's a lot of steadfastness. It's a lot of um, stability. That's what we're looking at. So, it's going to be a very good year for uh, recovery for people who are... Um, bouncing back. I expect a lot of good things and hearing a lot of good stories about that this year as well, too. So um, there's lots of stories between the ox and the rat, but between the years, between both of them as they go. So it's pretty interesting to see how they uh, line up. Yeah. And I think we all need a definite change. And, and that sounds like a change in the right direction. Yes. <laughs> For sure. Um, so I've done a couple of feng shui projects in my uh, staging career, um, and it's they're very interesting and challenging. So first of all, can you explain to us a little bit about what feng shui is um, when you're designing a home? Sure. Feng shui literally means wind and water. It's elements. And so what you're, what you're doing is you're taking the elements and you are working with them um, in accordance to the positioning of the front door of the home. So everybody that works with a feng shui master will get a, they'll, they'll notice they, they walk in with compasses. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is they will always have a bakwa map. It's B-A-G-U-A, -A, bakwa. Mm -hmm. And the Bakwa family map, it, lays, it basically overlays on top of the structure of the property and it shows out the areas and the sections of the home that you need to activate in order to get positive chi or positive energy into the home. Gotcha. So it's all about making sure the positive energy moves in and throughout the property and the negative energy clears out the property. So that's what feng shui does. Is it's supposed to make sure a very harmonious and a very hospitable home. Yeah, and you want to make sure that you keep that energy encompassed in the home as much as possible. So what are some of the things um, you suggest that someone does? Because uh, our, our viewers are a lot of home sellers um, and obviously home stagers and real estate agents too. But what, what do you suggest someone do when they are looking to start adding feng shui to their home? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get the compass and the bakwa map. You want to make sure that the front door is aligned in either the blue the gray or the white sections of the of, of the map. And therefore it's gonna lay on top of it, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna show you where you want to um, position your uh, lucky items into the, uh, the area to activate good energy. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see a lot of water features. Um, you'll see plants, plants are very important as well too. 
Um, artwork is very essential, like the, the, the theming and the kind of idea between artwork is going to be very essential as well, too. Um, positioning of the beds and positioning of furniture is also going to be very key for feng shui, for ultimate feng shui to, to get the best type of um, uh, positive chi coming into your building. But really, it's come down to the architecture. You don't want to have the house architecturally built where the energy flows straight in and straight out of the house. Mm -hmm. You want to have something that's going to make sure that the energy comes in and the good energy meanders throughout the property in a very hospitable way and then kind of uh, just kind of disperses about that. And then the negative energy that disperses is what you want to do. Yeah. And I think, um, I think that's important too. like when doing your research and knowing your basics, if you're going to start um, playing around with some feng shui and you shared, um, you shared with us a project. So I'm going to see if I can get some photos up on here so you can kind of share with us what it is you did. And so this is the property, um, of the house, the house's exterior. How important is the actual piece of property and, and the home's exterior, Kevin? The exterior is important of, of which way the front door faces and as much as which way the, the primary facing of the house is. In this case, this house is facing north. So they're going to need to incorporate certain colors and certain elements into it. This is the pre-stage photo. This is before they've done any landscaping or anything else to it. Um, they've added a bench to the front door as well, too. Like there's a little bench seating area. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to work on the Bogan Via. Um, the exterior color is also going to be changed. The gray the gray um, garage door is actually probably going to stay because that ends up being one of the colors for feng shui. Now, uh, are, is the, the colors for north, north facing homes would be yeah. grays or blues. Now, would technically the energy be harder to get into this house because of the way the, the front door is set up where it's almost it's almost like hidden? The door, yeah, it's a pocket door, so you want to you want to be careful of of that as well. Too, that's why they've opened up and that they they don't have a solid door; they have a window light to it. It's going to be a modern property, kind of like a um, a slightly mid century modern kind of home. Is the way they they flipped the house, and they also kind of interjected some of these beachy kind of like Southern California vibes into it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way they wanted us to kind of stage it was with this very kind of contemporary, mid-century modern, but at the same time with adding in some kind of beachy kind of vibes into it, into uh, the the staging. Yeah, I love it. It's such a cute little house. And I like too that it's on, it's almost like on a hill. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that also helps. It's an eagle the rock. Yeah, so yeah. it's at the base of the hill of Eagle Rock. So that's a very up and coming area in Southern California right now in the Los Angeles area. It's very lots of lots of hipsters and everyone else live out there. So a lot of hipsters looking looking for feng shui. So I'm assuming you walk into the property and this is what this is what um, the room, the first room you walk into. Yeah. Yes, exactly. This is the first room you would walk into. And it's interesting because naturally enough, you would probably want to align the seating arrangement against the back wall, against the window wall, and then maybe put like the television above the fireplace. But in this case, that's not how we staged it because that's not the proper way of feng shui um of 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 positioning the furniture you want to make sure your fire element is to the left and that you have your focal element or the tv be on that front facing wall mm -hmm. and that's how we staged it that you see in the in, in, in the, the detail photos yes and i have that uh transformation right here which yeah is amazing 
yeah, we want to make sure we have the mountains and the hills as artwork above the fireplace because it's a very grounding element under the fire element. Mm. So that's the thing you're working with. You're working with all these different different elements within the property. So, um, and then we, we had the, the television facing on the correct wall, which was the technology wall. That's a 60-inch uh, television above a sideboard. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see to the right, but you can see a little corner piece there. And that actually you is have another, a, another. There you go. View. Yeah, the corner piece right there. There's a little, there's a little. Um, uh, bar, bar cart? cart. Yeah. Yep, it's a bar cart. And that's to activate the entertainment portion of it. Um in the center, the cocktail table, we went for a two-tiered cocktail table table with very round edges. Um, that's very round, is very auspicious. We don't want to have very hard angles at all times. But we had round angles, and then we staged it with travel-themed accessories. So we put mm -hmm. down a, a travel book, a globe, we have um, some binoculars and then we have like a, just an orchid on the table. So th that's speaking towards the, um, the, the part of uh, vacation and escape is inside of that portion of the room where it's been feng shui. So does the bag, uh, the bagua, bagua, bagua mat. Bagua. Bagua. Yeah. D yes. So does that map go over the entire plan and so each room is designated in a specific area or does it go over just one room and then there's different zones within that room that are related to that map? There's actually two. Okay. Um, you can bakwa map your desk or you can bakwa map the whole entire pop property. So just like, like I say, like, you know, you basically the Bakwa map, it's going to lay over the whole entire property. And it's going to tell you where to interject the elements in which corners and which places to put it into. But then you're going to, you can even get down to being very specific and you can feng shui your desktop to make sure you put the certain kind of elements in certain places and other elements in other areas. Uh, your, tel your monitor screens could be in the right facing direction mm -hmm. your desk is going to be in the proper d direction i'm not sure if you know but this is actually a very inauspicious direction for my office to be in i have a door facing right behind me so somebody can come behind me and stab me in the back <laughs> so what i have on the other side is a mirror so you can see so, then, so i can see that's on my, for my feng shui is a mirror. So therefore you can see a reflective surface. So you can see, and that's how you counteract the negative chi and the negative ideas that you have. You have the mirror there. Nice. I, my entire desk right now is just a mess. <laughs> it is not, it is not uh, feng shui at all. So now behind um, behind the sofa, you have an eating area here. So is this the dining room? Yeah, the dining room. It's a, this is a, um, I think it was a three bedroom house that we stayed. So we just had a dining room and we wanted also once again to keep everything round. Mm -hmm. We wanted, the round is sort of like the shape that we want to keep everything in. So we kept it round and we put four seats in there. And it was very important for us to have some sort of fruit or some sort of kind of, you look at the photo over there, that we put a tiered basket with tiered fruit on top of that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we were gonna maybe put some like, you know, cylinders with like some apples in there and some, some lemons and something else. But it was a little too tall for that space and looked very kind of unusual. So we just, switched out to a little basket with some fruit in there and that's supposed to be speaking towards abundance and towards the right of the dining table um it was very important for the feng shui master to call out and say we need to put a water feature in there so we included the tree as well as a little stand and a water waterfall a uh, rain feature um 
towards the right. So that's what the water feature is right there. Yes, and I do have that. I think it's this picture, maybe? Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so is this, um, does this get counterbalanced, you were saying, because of the, like, the fire, the fireplace and everything, or? Correct, correct. The positioning of the fireplace, the front door, as well as um, where it was located in, in, to the right of the front door. That's where you want to have the water feature. So right at the front door from when you're when you're walking in on to on there. If you put the water feature on the wrong side, it literally spills spells tears coming down the side of your house. Oh. Your house is crying. It's not doing so well. So you want to make sure the water feature is positioned correctly on the um in in, in the in the in the position of the house according to where the front door is located at. Nice. I um, it's, it's such. It doesn't have to be a big water feature either, too. It's I mean that's a small little little mini water feature, but we just brought a little stand in there just to kind of you know highlight it. It doesn't have to be like a huge waterfall or anything kind of something like that. Just <laughs> that some, would some be cool. I have an aquarium in mind. That's what I do, and I've been I've been growing little froggies and fish and and very auspicious kind of animals inside of my, in my, in my little aquarium, in my, my water corner. So that's where I did what I did. I mean, it, it came by happenstance. I'm actually looking over for a friend of mine, um, my very dear friend of mine, Cindy. But um, I, when I, when I brought it into my place, I made sure that I put it into the right corner of my house to make sure that it's spelled very good flow of energy and everything else as well too and it's just right there off to the side of the kitchen that's i need a water feature i think it just calms you down too just the sound it of does. it what oh, else can yeah. you like is there anything else you could put in the water area besides an aquarium or a even a fountain you could do water artwork Something that's spelled and looks something like waterfalls of artwork or something else like that. You can use anything that kind of brings the idea and the subject of it. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed on the wall that I go split between the living room and the dining room. But that one was specifically, yeah, right there, the artwork that's on there. Yeah. It's specifically supposed to be word artwork. Um. And that's, we were very specific on the type of artwork that we chose for the property because that was where you position it also means a lot too. So word artwork on the east wall, mm -hmm. the mountain artwork on the west wall is gotcha. how we did it. Yes, so the mountain wall. Okay. The mountain, yeah, on the west wall above the fireplace. And then... Let's see what other, we've got some other pictures here for this room. So, Kevin, was this, did the sellers want this st stage um, particularly for feng shui? Or do you know that a particular buyer is going to be looking for this? Um, uh, in this case, the seller, they asked for a feng shui stager to come in because they actually had a feng shui master do the overhand overlay plan of the whole entire flip. Mm -hmm. So they just wanted to find somebody who could stage it in accordance to what the Feng Shui Master has outlined. On, on, on. So it was a very easy project for us. I just basically had to show up with my stuff and make sure, my, make sure you know, it happened. Other than that, I have to develop the plan and I have to put the Bakwa map down. I have to make my suggestions of where we're going to put things and what to do. And some of my clients may get it. Some of them may not get it. So that's why I try to do like light feng shui stuff in, in homes just to kind of get get them to get understand you know what we need to do to the property mm -hmm. um without taking them into the full tilt of an education of a feng shui where they're like i've lost them so yeah and we have a question here from el rivera uh, and she's saying is there items you should not have in, fun in a feng shui home yes um there are uh, books and and knife knife blocks 
those are things that are considered to be very vertical and up and down. Very vertical um, pieces are considered to be like knives, if you think about that. Okay. So you want to have in your bookcase, you want to place your bookcase, book books, some, some of them horizontal, some of them vertical, and you want to put some uh, doors, some glass doors, or maybe even solid doors in front of the cabinetry of the bookcase. Um, knives on a knife block. You want to make sure those are not left out in the middle of the kitchen for um, staging purposes specifically. That's that's one thing we do as well too. But also for design wise as well too, you may want to have it inside of the, cu the cupboard or have like a knife drawer instead of having a knife block. Interesting. Or you may not want to display the knives on the wall. You know, have a magnetic strip with the knives on the wall. Yeah. That that could be uh, something that 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 uh, you would probably possibly want to avoid. Um, with sharp weaponry, and that's where that's where chopsticks were invented from because it's not weaponry. It's really? round chopsticks. Yeah, and then they eat with them, and it's not considered to be weaponry. Um, that's why you don't take your child your bowl of rice and stab your um rice with the chopsticks and that's like considered to be a very bad thing is because it's, it's like it's like weaponry hmm. so yeah interesting um yeah we've got some nice comments going on here hi uh Sidia? i think that's how you say your name she says sharp corners is the problem and dead stuff like plants and clutter around yes like so potpourri you don't really see potpourri too much it's not really something that feng shui people really deal with because it's dead dead material um live plants once they start to expire you want to make sure you change them out you don't want to have dead plants in, in the property so now you put plants in almost every corner of this room here yes and that's specifically on purpose that was a feng shui thing called out for for corners to be co covered uh, with plants, mm -hmm. trees specifically to be covered. And so, so it's to, to cover the sharp corner, um, to kind of make sure it's not going to be so, so sharp of a corner and it's kind of soft thing. And I do that my stagings in general and, and, and uh, the way that I do my stagings, it just happened to be that they just said, make sure you put some plants in the corner here and there. And, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do that anyways. <laughs> where do you a uh, side note here where do you get your trees from because i know that's always such a hard thing for stagers to find um i get them from a jocelyn main wayfair ikea uh, ikea's got some just got the bamboo plants and these stock plants that you see right here these are bad bamboo ones from ikea so mm -hmm. they're very very um inexpensive to pick up so like maybe like you know like like sixty bucks or something like from a plant or something like that, so you can really easily rent them out. Wow! So yeah, yeah it's staging budget. Staging budget. Okay, so this is a galley kitchen. Tell us a little bit. Was was there a problem with this at all in terms of feng shui? Yes, they did want to make sure that the sink and the window was completely opposite of the fire range stove mm -hmm. so they had to shove the stove down as you can see the stove has been kind of has not been installed yet but they had to bring it down a little bit further down on the wall so it was not diametrically right opposed mm -hmm. to the um the, the the window and also the sink interesting and once they remove all the tape and all the, the paper from the window, the sliding door window, that's a small little um, uh, patio balcony that goes up to, towards the outside that we, we stage with a little cafe set, a little bistro set. Now, what about the colors here in this room? Because you did use um, blue and yellow. Yes, blue and yellow was specifically called out for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, the color palette for the house, there were certain areas of the house that were, um, they wanted to incorporate gold and blues into. And then you'll notice also there's one room that they incorporated pink into. Oh, there we go. There pink it room. is. Pink room. And we still incorporated the blue to kind of, kind of, kind of just kind of nod and kind of keep it a little more faithful to the idea of it. But um, but yeah, this is the secondary room, and they asked us to stage it with 
a, a more of like a pink. So we picked a coral pink. To Love go that with color. It. Yeah, just to kind of kind of play along with it. And then um, the master bedroom had um, lots of yellows and um, you have the yellow and the blue. And then also um, on the other wall, there were these honeycomb shelves. Honeycomb was very, very um specific for the master bedroom so the nightstands are honeycomb we have the honeycomb showing up in the pillows in the wall brackets that we have on the other wall to the right of it yes those are all honeycomb as well too there are those honeycomb shelves that you yeah. were talking about now i mean was the number of shelves uh feng shui related as well or yes Absolutely. You want to make sure that you keep things to odd numbers. Mm -hmm. um, the number specifically, the number four is a very bad thing. The number eight is a very good thing. So you'll notice that feng shui buyers will probably close on the eighth or the 18th, but never on the fourth or the 14th. Interesting. And the reason why that happens is because in the Chinese language, the number four sounds similar to the word death. So they don't want to incur that. So they want, they, so, and, and number 14 is more of like, it's even worse. It's a <laughs> willing death. It's just, a, it's not a very happy thing at all. So stay so away, stay to, away from those. Yeah, days. we we try to stay away from fours and fourteens. Um, that's that's that uh, even numerical addresses. You know. Oh like no! Someone is saying her house is four 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 five. What can I do? I knew it. Uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't end in a four. Well, that's good. My brother's is four one four four, and he ends up in a four. So he say he's like, oh no. So I mean. That's just, it's just a numerology thing for Chinese numerology. And, you know, you could, there's obviously other feng shui things you could do inside your home to remedy, remedy that. But as far as numerology goes, that is sort of something they look at. Eight, if you take eight and you turn to sideways, it makes an infinity sign. It's very auspicious. It's round and spins around. The fours are, are very sharp and they have like, you know, that kind of, the look to it so that that kind of reminds him of of that word death um also he's asking if you death. have a cure she's asking if you have a cure for that what so what should she do um, for the house number besides renumbering your house i mean you, there's nothing but more you can do to it <laughs> 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 um I mean, you, just, you just probably want to make sure that the interior of the house is feng shui properly. Make sure that the house, I mean, I mean, I would wonder, is this house facing at the end of a T intersection of a, of a street? That would make it even worse. I, I, I'm interested in talking to this person to find out more about the property because like that is an, also another thing that is very cautious. People are very cautious about is about homes that are facing at the end of the intersection of the street. So when you're driving down the street, the headlights face the front door. People are known to reposition the complete front door so the headlights won't face the door at homes that are, that are T intersection. They, they maybe move the, the door to the east or to the west in the entry and, and to, to get around that. So there are a lot of things you can do to the property and the structure of the property, even, even if the numerology isn't correct, there's a way that you can still feng shui the property and counteract a little bit of that, making sure the water features on the right side or that um, there are no um, diametric fire and water features, you know, facing each other at the same time too, or which way the front door faces and opposed to where light hits it. So she's saying she's on I it looks sounds like she's on a, like a coulter sack, like a search she's on a circle. So that's that's probably good, no. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> she's on a circle. She also says everyone is four in her subdivision. Everyone like has a four. Wow. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but it does face west. And she says she loves you. She loves, I love this guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about facing west in that direction, too, because if you're facing west and all of a sudden somebody's coming, the, the, the car lights are coming down that direction, that could be a problem. So you may want to get like a Bakwa mirror, uh, a shape of a, an octagonal mirror and place it on the front of your door. And that put it on the front of your door? door? Yep. Put the mirror at the front of the door so that when the when the headlights face, they hit that front door. And it reflects that back. Light back on. Yes. Yeah. And that could just be like your decorative thing at the front door. Um, okay, keep the questions coming, guys. If you have questions, let us know in the comments and we'll try and answer them for you. Uh, Kevin, I'm interested, though, about the placement of a bed. Because okay. obviously this pro probably wasn't where you necessarily wanted to place it and cover the window, but yes, yes, you don't want to cover the window and you also don't want the feet to face directly out the door. Mm -hmm. That is how they carry the dead out through the feet first through the door. So in this case, we had uh, several situations. We also don't want to have your feet facing the plumbing. So we added the ottomans at the front of the, of the bed. Um, I, think that, I think that the Feng Shui master actually laid out this room. So I followed her suggestion in this, even though if I were to do the room myself, I would have it so that the that the bed would be facing the closet, closet. with the closet doors on there. Yeah. And the closet doors also won't be mirrored. You'll notice that as well too, because mirrored and reflected surfaces in master bedrooms spark infidelity. So we don't want to do that. Hmm. So, <laughs> um, it's going to be a solid closet doors that they, that they place on top of there. And, um, the feng shui master actually laid out this room. This room was a little bit, because I was kind of confused with it, because I wouldn't necessarily would have placed it this way, because I, it, it is facing, I'm actually standing in the front door right now, okay. taking the photo. And but then to the left of me would be the door to the bathroom, so, the, so one of the feet would be facing a plumbing fixture, which is not ideal either that's literally like taking your fortune and your good luck and flushing it down the toilet but you're saying the ottomans kind of prevent they put like a stop yeah i mean i guess you could also um, have a footboard right would that help yes a footboard would help dressers on the other side of the wall that would help as well too and then we have a dresser on the other side of the wall as well too um, we're just filling in the room so it's not so like, like they have that Titanic principle where everything's facing over the, over one certain direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I may go back to that room and, 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 and talk to her and say, should we switch it around again to towards facing the other direction? This house hasn't gone online yet. Um, we're still waiting for the, the landscaping and the, the driveway to be reported again and, and the, the painting. So this looks like it was a dual purpose type of third, third room. Yes. If you were to place an office desk or do something in a room, this is where we would have placed it. This is the, and also in the direction of the wired wall. This is where they asked us to plug in like a cat five and all, all the, the, the computer elements is facing on the right hand side wall. Mm -hmm. So we were like, well, we don't want to leave this just as a, just as an office. We, we thought we would do it as just more of like a dual function and be bringing in like a day bed as well too. Cause the room does kind of extend down a little bit further and there's like room for a bench and then also a, uh, a chest. So, but this is how we um, did this one. So there are definitely rooms um, that are better off for technology and to put, your computer into, but to put your office into. And we also functionate the office desk as well too, making sure that the computer is at an angle, angle underneath the light yep. with the plant towards the left. And then on the right hand side, we have a telephone with some books 
So that's supposed to encourage uh, the telephone to start ringing for business. So we kind of stage this one as a stager's room and maybe a stager's going to get some business out of this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I like them. And I like the gold too. Yeah, this yeah, this one also specifically they called out the, the color gold for it. So was there anything with the bathrooms in terms of feng shui and, and what you had to do? Yes. In the bathrooms, um, we there's gonna be a glass enclosure that goes on top of the on, on top of the window. We didn't bring a, a shower curtain on purpose. Um, because you want to be able to see the tile and all. But the bathroom was specifically called out to be in the watercolor of blue. So we actually helped the client um, source the tile and also um, spec the color on the uh, the vanity cabinet yep. um, where the, the countertop is as well, too. Because that, that was the color of blue and yellow was supposed to be inside of the bathroom, the secondary bathroom in the hallway. Nice. And you you popped it with a little poof, poof of yellow. Yeah, a little loofah. A little <laughs> yellow loofah and some artwork. And so, these mirrors were very important. These mirrors were very important to making sure that they were gold mirrors mm -hmm. and that they were also facing on this wall. Um, this is the reflection from opposite from the front door. So we wanted to have the mirrors there to help bounce the good energy around the whole entire property and bring it around. And we didn't have one large mirror to fill up the whole entire space. So we used two and we broke them up. And I don't think that's, 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 uh, thank God we didn't stagger them. That would be a little bit worse, but the, we kept them very even. So it made it feel like one continuous mirror continuous throughout. Was there a reason why you did it vertical versus horizontal? Um, Vertical, just because we want to show the height out. We want to show more vertical height inside the room. Um, it's, an, it's a small, little narrow hallway as well, too. So um, I think that doing two horizontal mirrors might have looked a little stunted, a little more squattier mm. than, than we if we did them horizontal. I mean, vertical, sorry. Yeah. And then uh, we talked about this, how this is really important to have in your space. Um, got a couple other pictures here. I love, and then this is what you were talking There's about. There's a travel, like, yeah. That's our travel area for for the living room, uh, the globe, the binoculars, and the little camera on top of just like a travel book. That was that was very essential that we bring, brought in those kind of elements into there because that's um, vacation and relaxation corner um, space. That's where we really wanted to have that those ideas really be pushed. I love that. And I love staging with that stuff. I have a ton of it. And then there's the bar cart that you were talking about. So in this this yeah. area, your living room, um, you used a lot of gold. So this was one of those areas where you had a... Gold and natural materials. If you notice, the chairs are woven with the, with the white leather it's woven, but the but the the the, the wood framing is the golden framing as well too. Gold was very much um, an element for the living room mm -hmm. as far as how it was supposed to be. And then also even they got specific down to one sofa and two chairs as opposed to a sectional sofa. We didn't want to cut off the flow of the energy into the room. We wanted to have. The energy to be open for those back windows back there so we pick some small frame chairs that are wood framed and that will go along with that sort of beachy element that they required i mean the beachy element it was not something feng shui that was just a client request they they wanted to kind of put in there i'm like okay that's going to be interesting to put a beachy <laughs> element feng shui house in eagle rock where there's no beach no close to it but we can make it work somehow yeah. So we just picked like a golden starfish pillows and, you know, just kind of, we were just a little more mindful on the, on the things that we chose from there. Um, and the colors on, on that, that were represented on, mm -hmm. even on the sofa, we wanted to make sure the blue is in there, but the coral still showed up to kind of give a nod to what you're going to be able to see later on in the property. So it didn't come out of left field. 
Yes, I love um, <laughs> in staging. I love that. I love that we kind of give them like foreshadow of what they can see in the house, and they don't even realize mm -hmm. that we're doing that. And half the time, I feel like we don't either. We just subliminally do it somehow. <laughs> right? It just happens naturally. It's a natural thing. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, we were talking about the the importance of the colors of these of these two colors. And yeah, the, the blue and the yellow with the honeycomb that was very important for them to have inside the master bedroom. Why, um, like, why the honeycomb uh, shape? The shape that that reminds it's very much um, similar to the bakwa. Okay. It's very similar to the bakwa. Yeah, it's almost um, like an octagonal, but it's more of like you know shaped round. Round is very very good square or triangle you want to be kind of be a little more careful of of those um because they've got the sharp corners on the edges so um the honeycomb was specifically called out just to kind of have that kind of round faceted kind of feel to it without it being completely bald now another important part when you're feng shuiing your home is having crystal and light bounce around and things like that. So, and, and I feel crystal like this, lamps. this is a great way that you can do that. Yes. Crystals inside of the master bedroom, um, spark energy and life. So we brought in these crystal ball lamps. Um, and once again, they're not perfectly round. They're kind of like, you know, kind of, they're kind of faceted a little bit as well mm -hmm. too, to kind of, kind of hopefully get a little more of this honeycombish kind of feel to it. Everything has texture to it in, in the master bedroom, um, as far as it goes and it's not being just perfectly round. So, um, we were just really going for that and also the, for the crystal to, to really make it kind of um sparkle a little bit in the bedroom yeah and then i saw that you had this picture so what does this uh this piece of artwork represent okay so this is going to be in the office this is the, the dual purpose office room as well too the lion's pride is a very good picture to put up there that's a family portrait and also uh, that also represents strength strength within the family unit so you want to place this on the east corner of your office wall. Either it's going to be a lion's pride, it could be a family portrait, it could be something else, but that's the corner that you put. And in staging, we don't stage with family portraits. You yeah. Know, you just, the, you know, we don't. So it's, I, I just did the, the, the lion, you know, or elephants or tortoises. Those are very, very good animals. But the lion is what I chose for that, for that corner. And that, that's a family portrait um, to be placed on that corner in the office. I love it. It's so, it's so, it's, it's amazing how much work goes into the placement of things in a feng shui home. So how often yeah. are you... How often are you are are you using feng shui in your design and staging projects? I do light feng shui staging in all my projects, but um, as far as a project of this caliber that comes along, we hardly see it happen. Um, you know, I'm starting to get phone calls now. People are asking specifically, "Do you do this type of staging?" And that is um, that that's starting to pop up recently mm -hmm. but to be honest you don't see people that go full tilt into the, the staging and working alongside the staging master and everything else like like that yeah i was gonna say like so would you suggest that stagers potentially add this as a service in their business or do you find that it's probably um sparse in terms of business that they'll actually get and maybe not as lucrative. Oh, I think that's great. Yeah, I mean, cause there's so many things about feng shui that, that, that are so much about staging, about decluttering and making sure everything is very neutral, open and, and pleasing to the eye. Um, 
you know, plants are very important as well, too. And these are things that we can easily incorporate into part of our staging. We don't have to have the, the perfect stage tiles, but we can bring in elements into there that can really nod to it. And staging and, and feng shui is basically common sense, if you think about it. I mean, and that's just basically what feng shui is, the way I see it, it's just sort of super, superstition and, 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 and common sense. So um, I think they work very well together. I think you can put them together um, all the time in your staging and just small elements. Like you, like let's say you walk into the front door and then you look right into the back and there's a big glass door there. Mm -hmm. Well, then we're gonna wanna bring a plant in or something else to make sure that all the good energy doesn't come straight to the front door and straight out the back door. And it's all the, just a simple little thing, just bringing a plant in towards a corner, just to kind of help the the the, um, the energy meander throughout the property. And that's an easy way to, to do that. And you probably would do that anyways, you know, as far as staging goes, you want to make sure you have a good focal point. Yeah. And that you do bring in the natural and, and I don't, you know, stuff like that just easily makes it feel a lot more welcoming and, and warm. So it does make sense. Thank you so much for all of, all of your knowledge on this amazing topic. We had some great conversations here. If you guys have questions um, about feng shui your own spaces or um, just want more information, make sure that you put, them, put it in the comments below and let us know how you liked this video. Kevin, if anybody wants to work with you or um, on a staging or design project, where can they find you? Just at my website, identityhome.com. Or if you go anywhere on social media, everything is all Identity Home, at Identity Home, and you'll find me. Great. Um, or you can always look at me on TV. I'm I know. Someone there. was saying, when I saw his name, I remember him from Flip or Flop. Uh, yeah, we're still working with him. We're actually yeah. moving on to new shows and everything else as well, too. So we, you'll be seeing us regularly on HGTV. So just turn on the TV. You'll see us. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your amazing um, knowledge with us. And I hope to have you back at some point. Of course. <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay. Bye.